How's it going, you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Solar, and today we're going to do some wind testing for solar trackers. We both have a single and dual axis tracker from EcoWorthy that we've done some power testing on, but now we're ready to put it to the test to kind of its Achilles heel, and that is the wind. Both of these units from the manufacturer say after 38 miles per hour, you're supposed to remove the panels. I don't think anybody's gonna do that. So let's go ahead and test out by creating some wind with this airboat to see when does it actually damage and can they actually handle up to 100 mile per hour wind. So let's jump into it. So we'll go ahead and get the V8 started up, warm things up, and the way I'll monitor with this wireless display it goes back to that weather station. It's a little delayed, but it gives me a solid indication for our 30 second interval at each of the four different wind speeds. First up will be 40 miles per hour, and that's right above the threshold where they say you should start to remove your panels to avoid damage. So we'll maintain this for 30 seconds and the video itself is at 2x speed. So that will be why they seem like they're a little bit shorter and the engine frequency might seem a little bit fast. Next up, after seeing no issues at 40 MPH, we'll go up to 60 mile per hour and see what we can shake loose on this single axis tracker. Remember the dual axis tracker is up next and it has a protection where it will go flat. This one's just set to the angle, which is not the worst case angle. If it makes it through all these testing, we might jump back and put a much more aggressive angle, which that should put a lot more force on this unit. Just checking everything out after 60 miles per hour looks good to go. So we're gonna progress on to our third of four different wind speeds. This is gonna be 80 mile per hour. And you can see it is shaking all over that 10 watt panel that powers the small battery connected to the control unit, it's kind of flapping all over the place, but everything still seems to be attached. And other than the weather station here, rotating a little bit during the trial, everything looks good to go. So I'll go ahead and rotate that weather station facing the other direction. That'll throw off our wind direction, but not our wind speed. Should still be accurate here for our last trial, which we are gonna let this thing eat and put it all the way to the floor to see what we can get for the maximum wind speed. I'm hoping for over 100 miles per hour. And you will see here for the display, kind of bouncing all over the place, but it goes up to 105 miles per hour for this 30 second duration. The tracker's going all over the place, but everything does seem to still be attached. Now, honestly, I am pretty darn impressed that the single axis tracker made it through, especially the 80 miles per hour and 100 miles per hour tests. I mean, we have a little play, but honestly, these trackers always had a little bit of play. Nothing ripped off, nothing's been damaged. And even though this angle is only a slight afternoon angle, it still made it through. Now I can put this at a much more aggressive angle, which we probably will do after the dual axis tracker, after we test this one. And remember, you are not gonna get similar results unless you take your footings seriously. I've seen a lot of people attach these, what I hope is temporary, in some type of pressure treated stand. That is not gonna get similar results. And then here's a quick overview of what it took to get these footings in place to give you that solid base for your single and dual axis trackers. The instructions for both the single and dual axis tracker call out for a two foot by two foot by 27 inch cube of concrete. So I did a two by two form here with two by six boards, and then I leveled those up. You wanna take your time and you wanna make sure that those boards are perfectly level so you can reference them while you pour the concrete. I took number four or half inch rebar and made a little cage right in the middle of a 16 inch in diameter hole. So I'm a little shy, I'm only nine bags opposed to 14 bags of 80 pound sacrete, but it will make for a nice solid base here where I'm just floating it off and make sure it's level. Then you'll position your pole right in the middle, marking all of your holes, and then taking your time to drill those out with a rotary hammer. I'm not gonna use the sleeves, I'm gonna use the Simpson Strong Tie, and you can reference this QR code or links in the description for what I'm using and all the different parts and supplies we use throughout this. Make sure you get the debris and dust out of the hole because that can lead to failure of your anchors if you don't. Now back to testing and specifically for this dual axis tracker. It actually has a safety mode. You can see its own wind speed sensor that goes into the controller. That's what I'm testing right now. After a 0.6 volt is detected on the wind speed sensor and that corresponds to, you gotta look it up in this chart, 
about 19.6 miles per hour, it will go through this cycle to get it to a horizontal position. All those are configurable parameters in the controller, so you can check those and make sure they're good for you. Now going through a similar setup, we're gonna start off with 40 miles per hour. Looks like no problem at all. I really do like that return to a flat position when it detects high wind. I think that's gonna help out. But we'll step through 30 second trials onto 60 miles per hour now. And overall, all I can see is I definitely need to secure and wrap up the small wire pigtail going to the wind speed sensor because it's flapping around everywhere. Now let's crank it up. Let's get up to 80 miles per hour and see if we start seeing the little 10 watt panel flap around like we did on the single axis. But overall, I mean, there's a lot of shaking and movement, which we'd expect, but it's not too bad and it really doesn't look like it's anywhere close to failure. So we'll crank things up for the last interval going to not only 100 miles per hour, but actually I, I did read out 110 miles per hour at that weather station for this last trial, giving it all she's got. And overall, it's handling it like a champ and definitely not seeing anything catastrophically fail or fall off this dual access tracker. Dual access tracker made it through and it actually has went past the timeout condition where it's right back to tracking the sun. No failures, no issues, linear actuators are good, panels are still attached, all the clamps are in place. I don't think EcoWorthy is giving itself enough credit, but let's do one last test, a much harsher test where we're gonna have the extreme angle, and let's say a wind gust comes up on our single axis, this does not have the safety measures where it'd go flat. So we're gonna go 105 to 110 mile per hour, right against a wall of panels and see if it can hold through. I would have to think this is gonna be a failure, but we're gonna soon find out. Well, I never would have predicted that. So with the tilt angle all the way over, 100 plus mile per hour going right against the back, we're still good. We're back to tracking the sun. Everything looks good. There's no failures. Very impressed. And I was a bit skeptical when I saw the 38.5 mile per hour take off your solar panels. I thought, oh man, these things are gonna completely fail. I'd say the single axis and dual axis both pass with flying colors. Now, does that mean it's a good purchase for you and your DIY setup? Let me know what you guys think down in the comments, but also if you haven't seen our video on how much power gain you're gonna get compared to just a simple ground mount, this video right here will walk you through my two days of testing three different setups side by side to get the power gains that I see at this location. And then remember, if you guys are thinking about solar for your home to completely offset your power bill, there is a link in the description. In a few minutes, filling out a little bit of information, you can get what size and price that would be for your home. In 2025, this might be the last year that we get the 30% tax credit. There is a chance that that's going away and that will make a huge difference with the return on investment for putting solar on your home. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.